Hello, beautiful souls. Good morning and happy spring equinox 2024. We have a little bottle baby we picked up from a friend down the road. And I think we're going to say she's going to make it. But she's been a little spoiled. And she's been hanging out with us recently, hasn't she? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> <Emma is> very jealous. <laughs> we are headed outside to get our morning chores done before we lead our forest kindergarten. But first, we'll bring you to a room in our basement where we have our seeds started for the garden. A lot of these have already been planted in the greenhouse. And we have about three to five more weeks until our last expected frost. So we're just starting to get some of those seedlings nice and secure so they can have a head start in a few weeks. We have four mamas that are ready to be milked. Okay, go ahead, release the babies. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just got squirted with milk. Oh, in the face. <laughs> Thanks, Venus. Aphrodite, are you all done getting milk from your mama? Are you over it, Twink? <laughs> oh, maybe not. Nemo here goes on baby watch today. So we are going to pull her back to the maternity ward. She's gonna be a little stressed though because Oreo here's her, her best bud. We measure out our chicken feed each day, a quarter pound per bird per day. But today I have some extra whey for making cheese. And since we do not have pigs at the moment, it gets mixed into that chicken feed. We also got some cherries. We were extremely tempted for spring fruit. And these are terrible. So they're gonna get a little treat today. Followed. We have 50 Cornish Cross chickens. They're about a month old. They have about a month remaining. They will become meat for our freezer and for the year ahead. Some of which we also do chicken processing workshops here at the farm. And my children are responsible for feeding their 4-H chickens and the ducks, and the cats, and it looks like today you have a little stowaway.
I just wanted to uncover the tomatoes. Our story this week at Forest Kindergarten is Golden Rabbit and the Rainbow Eggs. So we are having an ostrich egg hunt for our children. One of my students also has an ostrich farm. So we trade ostrich eggs for tuition. And we are going to hide these in the forest so that our children can have an egg hunt again this year. Paints are ready for painting the ostrich eggs. Snack of homemade bread, herbal tea, ready with a fire going for morning circle. We'll see you on the other side of Forest Kindergarten. Honeybees are super active. They have already attempted, or we're going to attempt to swarm. They made a swarm cell. And last week, I took the main queen and moved her into a new hive and made a split. So now we have two. There are so many drones in this hive. You can tell it's springtime. Welcome out to our greenhouse. This 30 by 54 greenhouse has been amazing. Such a game changer with having the garden and allowing us to harvest a lot throughout the year. If you were with us in our winter solstice, I had a lot of aphid damage and we are aphid free in here right now. It's incredible. Those ladybugs flock to our white roof of our house like crazy in autumn and every day that it gets warm they come back out so I was collecting them from the house as gross as that is collecting them by the jars every day if possible every warm day that I could bringing them out here and putting them in our plants and little by little those ferocious beasts ate those aphids and we are looking amazing here now and I'm going to do some watering to capture some of this sunlight, get that sunk in the garden beds, close up these walls. We are expecting close to freezing temperatures tonight. So we wanna keep this as warm in here as we possibly can. And I'll also show you our Forest Homeschoolers square foot gardening bed, and maybe that can help you with your garden planning. This whole bed here was planned and it is being planted by our Forest Homeschoolers. And it is one of the few beds I have square foot gardening set up in. This is an amazing way to hit area and perimeter with our children, hit arrays, hit multiplication, and we turned it into a group problem solving effort that is taking many, many weeks to complete. So here's how we did it. The very first thing that I did with my forest homeschoolers during the winter season was got out a bunch of seed catalogs. Definitely Baker Creek is my favorite. I also love Johnny's for their hybrids. If I need to get a hybrid for disease resistance or there's just some other things in there that I can't find over at Baker Creek. But they had an abundance of magazines and their mission was to go through and cut out four different fruits 
or vegetables that they would like to plant in our garden in the upcoming year. After they did that, then I took all of their pictures and I grouped them together. So we had flowers, pumpkins, strawberries and raspberries, herbs, kohlrabi, which they love, carrots, Irish potatoes, one person picked lettuce, three people picked peas, onions, kale, which the children absolutely love, sweet peppers, cauliflower, corn. Once I did that homework, I had one more thing to do. I gridded our garden bed into square feet. Using simple nails and a tape measure and some string, I gridded out this garden bed so that we had equal square feet. Now, it was naked when we started. It has since been planted. But once we had that homework done, now it was their turn to do the planning. Within that grouping of vegetables that they picked out, then I told them how many plants or seedlings or seeds they can sow or plant per square foot. That cauliflower, you can do one per square foot. Sweet peppers, one per square foot. Kale, they can do one if they want the large leaves or nine plants if they want the baby leaves. They'd have to decide. Onions, nine per square foot. But you get the idea. The next step was to pick and design based on how many square feet we had, what they wanted and to prioritize that. So next, our children got a square foot of paper and they designed what they wanted to plant. We didn't say where, but every person within our class was able to do two squares. Some were simple and they just wrote one cauliflower. One kale, one kale, four lettuce, cucumber, when we were planning, this garden bed was empty. So it made it really easy to lay those papers down. Now, we decide now, how are we going to rearrange and design this garden bed? So you have to know where your sun is. I'm gonna put the highest, tallest plants toward me, that's my north side. My shortest plants on my south side so they don't get shaded out. So my lettuces and my carrots, they're going down here. My beets, eh, medium range. Tomatoes, those grow pretty tall. They need some trellising and determinants can grow 10 feet tall if you let them. Basils can grow like trees. Cucumbers, those need some trellising as well. So those are going up in the back. Peppers, kind of medium size, but eventually, you can rearrange all these pictures now, again, going with diversity within your garden bed, but you've prioritized what you want, rearrange it, now you have a design for your garden bed. So here's what we came up with. We were able to go in, plan based on those design principles, make a little plan, I'm a paper and pencil kind of person. Now you decide based now on my growing season and recommended planting dates when you plant everything. Everything isn't going to go in the ground at once. So we laid it out by week. Again, we can plant a lot earlier in here because we are in the greenhouse. So don't follow these dates. And you might be totally different wherever you are. But we laid out all the weeks that we're together and we started planting carrots and peas one week. Then Irish potatoes, onions, and lettuce. And when we come back from spring break, 
that's when we're, they're getting into the frost tender things such as cucumbers and tomatoes, zinnias, bush beans, peppers, and basil. Square foot gardening is a fantastic way to get your foot in the door, get started, really be able to visualize it and comfortably move into the design with your children. I'll show you some of the work that they have done so far. Here we have some nasturtium flowers. They are a cool season as well as a really great companion plant to many things in the garden. Plus edible flower and the kids just like to challenge each other to see who can eat the flowers and especially who can eat those spicy seeds. We dedicated several square feet to potatoes. Even though only one child was interested, we decided to make an experiment out of it. One of our square feet just has one potato planted per square foot. Another one has two and another one has four. And we are going to pull those out at the end of the school year and figure out, does the size change? And then if we measure the poundage, what do we see? So there's hands-on science for you as well with children. Moving down just a wee bit, these are the potatoes we just talked about. Here are our carrots. It takes a lot of patience to have carrots germinate from seeds. And you only want about 16 per square foot. And you find that the children are really heavy when they plant those seeds and they sow those seeds. But seed is a lot cheaper, so we just work on thinning those seeds out. Behind here, we have our English peas, which are King Tut purple pea. Also, if you get into those Baker Creek heirloom seeds, there is your history. There is your social studies lesson. That's a really cool one to study. But our King Tut peas are in the ground. And we sowed those according to square foot gardening recommendations. But because the children built a trellis, there were way too many peas needed for that trellis. So we snipped those down and the children just ate them on up and enjoyed those. Moving down just a wee bit more. We have kohlrabi, kale, cauliflower, kale, kale, kale. These children love kale. And also we have some lettuce coming up. One of our children wanted to plant onions. So we started those, I started those by seeds. The date is December 29th. So this is actually my first year planting from seeds. We always do sets out in the garden. So this will be an experiment for myself as well. But you see lots of empty beds still. And that's simply because we've put a lot of the cold hardy, the frost tolerant plants out and we're getting those happy, secure in the ground. And once we're away from that risk of frost, then we're gonna put those other things in there, those tomatoes and those cucumbers. I know you already saw tomatoes over here, but that's just my gamble. We could get a really cold night and I could lose all of those tomatoes or we could keep them but don't know until we do it. That's a beet. That's a yellow beet. Two. Yep. Yeah. Fattest and biggest. Three beets. Wait. Go for it. In that one? Mm -hmm. You can pick both of those. Four beats.
tired of this. I'm not tired yet. Just get it weird. Just don't open it to me. You can check and see how big the carrots are if you'd like. Just pick one of them. Hmm. Not that big, are they? Okay. Our garden tour is going to be quick outdoors. We are running out of sunlight already today, but this is our asparagus bed. This is the hybrid bed that we planted a few years ago. And once in a while, the past couple days, we've been getting some asparagus. This bed was burned just last week you can see the weeds are already coming in. We'll have to burn it again, I think, before all this asparagus officially sets in. We have a lot of woven weave fabric down throughout the garden simply to help out with the weeding because March is great to plant everything now, but come summertime, it's gonna get into overwhelm with all the weeding. You can just see we have some seedlings coming up. We have beets that are coming up. Our peas are way shorter than what we have in the greenhouse. Let's see. Our hazelnuts are still dormant, but we do have calendula that is coming up. The garlic is doing great. We have several beds of hardneck garlic planted. Strawberries, onions, the strawberries are flowering out. So this one got nipped by the frost, but this one we'll see what happens tonight. More garlic, our grapes, as well as the grapes we transplanted last month. Those ones are still dormant. We did save a few beds to be planted once the risk of frost has gone. And we're also starting to replace some of those beds just with pine trees we have in the forest. It only lasts a few years but it's free. Behind me, we have more grapes, blackberries, red raspberries, and all of those are not yet breaking their dormancy. Our elderberries, I cut back the harshest I have ever done before. Last year, I cut them all back to head length as well as thin them out and they were still ginormous and towering. So I cut them just above to waist length and they're just starting to come out as well. Tonight we are going to water these garden beds as well. We haven't had a rain in the last week so we will get them watered. We do not have the irrigation hooked up and started yet just because we are still in the time where we could have frost and we don't want those pipes to freeze. So we will water, 
And then our mission is to cover up all these beds. You see where these white row covers are and that is twofold. These are cool season crops. They're not gonna care if they get a little light frost tonight. But two, we have a peacock and he will come along and he'll eat all of these in the blink of an eye. So we have that twofold covered strawberries and stuff for the for the frost, but also so the peacock. We're slowly navigating that with Mr. Nilsson because he's a really great personality to have on the farm and we really like that. But he's eating a lot of our garden, so we are figuring that one out. I guess you'll see our decision in the summer solstice video. Kids are sleeping in the basement with the baby goat and the silky chickens. Happy spring. 